Hello and welcome to the IPBL World Cup roster release show. We are super excited to get the World Cup underway. I am Nihal, as always, for IPBL Weekly. I mean, not always, but not always, not always. But for this time, I'm joined by my brother Sahil. How you doing, Sahil? I'm doing well. I'm excited to uh, talk about the IPBL action that's going to get underway very shortly. Absolutely. So just so you guys know, the IPBL is split into two groups of four. The top two from each group advance. Uh, the groups are round robin style. Everyone plays each other once. Uh, then there'll be a semifinal and a final. And then also each roster consists of 10 Pokemon. They were split into five different tiers for each individual region. And then the coaches got had to take one from tier one, one from tier two, two from tier three, and then one from tiers four and five. And they got four uh, extra slots to use how they wanted um, using 400 free points uh, so that's basically how the roster construction work as I said we have two groups in the first group we have Hoenn uh, coached by Richie we have Unova coached by Matt Kalos coached by Jared and Alola coached by IPBL newcomer Samir in group two we have Kanto coached by Sahil uh, we have Johto coached by me we have Sinnoh, coached by IPBL newcomer Prono, and another IPBL newcomer coaching Galar in Griff. So those are our first two groups. Let's take a look at group one going first, and we're going to start off with Hoenn. We're going to go, we're going to go chronologically um, within each group region, uh, region-wise, um, and they the Pokemon are also separated into the tiers. So the first Pokemon called up for the Hoenn region is Deoxys Defense. Deoxys Defense, super strong Pokemon, gets spikes, recover taunt, um, and then like size of size and nightshade. Very annoying to deal with, um, but a good, a great defensive Mon for the Hoenn national team. Yeah, it's always cool to see new Mons get introduced into the IPBL. I don't believe this was something that was ever legal. Um, and there's a couple other Mons like that. Uh, but uh, one very prominently in the other conference that I'm sure we'll get to. But yeah, Deoxys Defense definitely can serve a lot of utility, can serve a lot of support, and can make uh, more offensive Mons jobs a little easier with some spikes on the other side of the field. Absolutely. Next up is Jirachi. Jirachi, Steel Psychic type from the Hoenn region. Two legendaries from Tier 1. All four uh, Pokemon in Tier 1 were Psychic types, so uh, Richie didn't have that much room to work with, but I think this is probably the best combination he could come up with. The other two were Latios and Latias. Drachi, a uh, super versatile mon, could be offensive or defensive, can also wish pass, um, and can stealth rock, uh, and also, I mean, it can also be special or physical, mm -hmm. so incredibly versatile mon. Uh, I'm excited to see how Drachi does in this World Cup. Yeah, super versatile mon, one of those mythicals that gets 100 in every stat category. Um, in terms of base stats, I remember using this in Season 1 to great effect. I'm sure you won't forget when I tricked my choice Scarf into a Melodic to set up a sweep uh, in the final week. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I really like this Pokemon. It's a pretty good defensive typing as well. It has got some important resists and immunities. And um, uh, yeah, the, the possibilities are endless with this one. For sure. Then the first Tier 2 Mon from Hoenn is Breloom. Uh, Breloom, you know, I don't think it's ever really been used in the IPBL. Um, maybe it has... So this is technically a dex cut, so it wasn't eligible for the last two seasons. Right. But even prior to that, I don't remember it being utilized, but it could have been. But awesome to see one of the dex, po dex cut Pokemon in the IPBL World Cup. Um, getting that fighting type and grass type really helps with Jirachi's, uh, weak Jirachi and Deoxys' weaknesses, um, especially ground for Jirachi, and then obviously Dark. Uh, I mean, it's it's a pretty frail Pokemon, but if you know if you run Toxic Heal, can also um, absorb you know toxics uh, for Deoxys Defense. But I guess Drachi can do that anyway. Uh, but it can it can absorb any status. Um, it gets uh, three good abilities, um, and you know it can be really uh, my least favorite set to go up against is like that Spore Sub Focus Punch set. <laughs> um, incredibly annoying, uh, but really strong Pokemon. Um, always love seeing it be used, and I mean, I guess, so, I personally have seen it more because I've done a couple of BDSP draft leagues, and everything, I think pretty much everything up until Gen 4 is in those games. Um, yeah. so. Next up in Tier 2 is Salamence, another really, really strong Pokemon. Gives him a ground immunity now, 
um, has really great synergy with Jirachi. Um, you know, Jirachi resists ice and fairy, um, and Salamence resists ground. So, really strong. Can be special or physical. Uh, the first hazard removal on his team. Um, so, I mean, it, it might be pigeonholed into that role a little too much, and you guys will see why as we go through the rest of the team. But honestly, Hoenn, Hoenn was tough. There were so many, there were so many type overlaps that it was really hard to build a balanced team for Richie. But so far, four incredibly strong Pokemon to the first two tiers. Yeah, and I think um, you know maybe potentially Salamence could be stronger if he was in a division um, with uh, Gens one through four teams because. Those generally have less fairy types since fairy type wasn't introduced, or Gen 1 through 5, I should say, before fairy type was introduced in Gen 6. But yeah, Salamence is uh, definitely, it's got two good abilities in Intimidate and Moxie. If you do want to run Defog and be a little more defensive, you can put Intimidate on there, but it's a very dangerous sweeper with Moxie. I believe Richie has experience with this Pokemon. He's used it effectively with uh, a bulky core before in the past, and certainly with Deoxys Defense and Milotic, he's got some bulk to surround it this time around as well. For sure. Um, and. Salamence can also be special. It has a decent special attack. So if you want to run more defensive and run like Hurricane and, you know, Flamethrower or something, that's also an option for the Hoenn national team. Next up, our first tier three for Hoenn, Milotic. Um, great value at tier three. I personally think his first um, initiative, uh, well, no, actually, Drachi gets a U-turn. So his second Pokemon with initiative, which will be really strong, especially if you can switch into Breloom and, mm -hmm. and put it in a good position. Um, on other water types, um, but a bulky water gets access to recovery. Another Pokemon that can tank uh, status um, uh, with Marvel Scale, um, and just just a really solid defensive mod. Do you off the top of your head know what the special attack on Milotic is? I think it's over. I believe it's over a hundred. Because it feel it feels like it's not going to be set up fodder. Like Scald and Ice Beam, obviously like, those are going to cover a ton of types. And the whole just entered so FIFA. I meant to I meant to type it sport. <laughs> while looking up. Uh, <laughs> Pokemon stuff, but um, yeah, no, Milotic is obviously just a super fun Pokemon to use. Gets Flip Turn, as you said. Um, Marvel Scale is a really cool ability if you want to run that Flame Orb set, or you know, you don't need to run Flame Orb. You can still run Marvel Scale. Um, competitive potentially could be useful <laughs> if you're if you know your opponent's gonna defog or something like that. So. Um, yeah, I think it's just a, a defensive Pokemon that is really solid all around and can put some offensive pressure on the other team. Yeah, it has 100 uh, special attack and actually 81 speed, so maybe we'll see like a Coil or Dragon Dance on Milotic this season. Uh, next up, uh, his second tier 3 and a, another water type, Sharpedo. Um, Sharpedo adds, I think, uh, well, he desperately needed a dark type at this point. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it gives him that. It gives him some speed with speed boost. Um, and a Pokemon that can hit relatively hard on the physical or special side. Yeah, Steven used Sharpedo pretty effectively last season. Uh, speed boost, you can never underestimate that. And yet, like you said, I mean, dark. he needed a dark type to resist uh, dark and ghost type moves. Yeah, I mean, I think this Pokemon has... I mean, it's not, it doesn't really resist anything. So, but having the offensive dark type is really good, uh, in my opinion, for his team. Next up is Blaziken in tier four. Blaziken without speed boost, uh, which is why it's in tier four. Of course, Blaziken with speed boost, Integral, and Dion bringing home the latest IPBL championship. Um, but this one without speed boost, still a strong Pokemon. He needed a fire type. It gave him two types he did not. Well, I guess he had fighting, actually. But it gives him a, a fire type which he did not have, um, and a Mon, again, that can hit hard and can run initiative, but no one no one really runs U-turn, I don't think. Um, but he could, like with Band or something. For sure, yeah. Very just solid Pokemon, not as exciting or flashy as it would be with Speed Boost, but he's already got a Speed Boost user, so that's something. <laughs> that is true, yes. Uh, moving on to our next Tier 4, Swellow. Swellow, super underrated Pokemon, especially in this league. Um, it's, it's a Pokemon that, in my other draft leagues, get in my showdown draft leagues, get drafts, gets drafted a lot. Um, another cut Pokemon, I believe. Um, right. So, super strong Pokemon. It can either you can either run Guts with like Facade and Brave Bird, which is it has a great attack stat and a great speed, uh, great speed tier, or the special Boom Burst um, set is is super strong with with its Scrappy ability. 
Um, it, it does a lot more damage, Specs Boom Bird, than you Boom Burst, excuse me, than you think it's going to do. All right, moving on to tier five, Armaldo comes in, giving him more or his second, only his second form of removal uh, with the Rapid Spin. So I mean, that's probably why this Pokemon is here for Rapid Spin, and uh, can also set up Stealth Rock as well if need be. Um, if he goes up against any rain or something like that, he can run Swift Swim. Um, but it's, a, it's an okay utility Pokemon. I believe I actually had Armado in, in Season 1 of the IPVL. Um, and uh, it did not go that well for me. But it is Tier 5, which you're required to draft. And uh, he does need that removal. So I think all in all, this is a pretty good pick. Offensively, it also gives him two types he doesn't have. Yeah, for sure. Check some boxes. I, I am more excited about his, his next Tier 5, though. Absolutely. And then he gets his, I guess, kind of defensive uh, dark type in Sableye. Um, it, it seems bulkier than it is because people either remember the Mega, but it can also get its Prankster Recover off. Um, it could set up Rain with Prankster for him, although, too, <laughs> for Swift Swim. Um, and then also, you know, obviously it gets the Prankster Taunt, Will-O-Wisp. Um, can also... Uh, foul play and knock off and all, all that good Encore stuff. is a cool prankster move too that's done well against me recently on the ladder yeah. um, that can just stop a sweep in its tracks very easily um, and yeah like you said I, just a super unique Pokemon that I feel like probably was a pretty awesome I don't know if it got prankster in gen 3 but I can imagine that that would have been pretty awesome if it, if it had that back then yeah I have no idea honestly um but that concludes the Hoenn national team. Here we can see the entire Hoenn national team and its beauty. Again, we have Deoxys Defense, Jirachi, Breloom, Salamence, Milotic, Sharpedo, Blaziken, Swellow, Armado, and Sableye. What are your thoughts on this team? Look at that red. Like, there's literally red on every Pokemon except for Jirachi. But if you run shiny Jirachi, you can, you can get that, like, constant red flowing throughout the team. I really like that, how it looks on this. That's true, yeah. It goes really well with the Hoenn flag. <laughs> um, uh, as you can see, with the Hoenn flag, with the Ruby, Sapphire, and Emerald. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think this is a really solid team, especially for how the tier list shook out. Um, I didn't mention Swellow gives him a ghost immunity, which I think is, is decently important for him, um, with, with Drachi and Deoxys defense. Um, uh, I, no, I don't know if Armado gets aromatherapy, but I... Um, it, it, Jirachi, I think, is going to have to run defensive more than he's going to want to, too, um, just to support the team a little bit. But I, there's a lot of possibility with this team, um, and it's, I think it's going to be really hard to prep for because it's a bunch of just really hard hitters, and they, even as Pokemon that are more defensive can hit pretty hard. So, excited to see how Hoenn does in Group 1. Alright, let's move on to Unova sporting their sword of justice's flag um first up in unova we have hydreigon the dark and dragon type um really good pokemon um incredibly high special attack stat and a pretty high attack stat decent speed tier um i've always had trouble using this pokemon because i i think i think i always just want to scarf it um but i think matt will be able to use this mod into really good effect yeah, they did give it Nasty Plot right in Gen 8, so it's got a little bit more option now. Um, but yeah, I, I, pretty good typing. Um, it's got Levitate, which is really nice, can, and it gets Defog too, so you can use it as hazard removal if you would like. But like you said, it might be better served offensively, but uh, for sure, I think um, it's gonna... That, that 98 speed tier with the Scarf um, can really counter a lot of opposing threats. Yeah, and I think already has a really good matchup against... Uh... Richie already in his group. Um, next up, so Matt was actually the only person who went with only one tier one throughout his entire team. Um, and I believe he has four, oh, he has three tier twos. Um, so he has, uh, first up, Darmanitan. Um, another decent speed tier Pokemon, around the same with the 95. Uh, and then obviously it just hits really hard with Sheer Force Flare Blitz. Yeah, for sure. You can you can choice scarf it. You can choice bandit. You can put a life orb on it. I, I, because flare blitz is like the far and away best move. I, I don't end up normally life orbing it, even though it doesn't take the the life orb recoil damage due to that sheer force mechanic. 
But yeah, I get switch initiative two in U turn. I mean, like, there's really like very few switch ins that can actually credibly switch into a flare blitz. So I don't know if he has any like wish passing or any sort of thing like that, but that could make uh, a Darmanitan even better. He does in tier five. So, um, yeah, uh, Darmanitan, really, really strong Pokemon. Um, another Pokemon that can threaten, you know, opponents out. And then U turn, like you said, along with Hydreigon. Uh, the next call-up for the Univin national team is Ferrothorn. I almost said Ferrothorn, you've been playing too much on you. Um, Grass Steel type, incredible typing, uh, Stealth Rock and Spike, so his first hazards. Um, and then it also hits pretty hard. Um, you know, you can run some front sets like Iron Defense and Body Press, but you know, you get knockoff power with Gyro Ball, you can also T-Wave. Um, really good Pokemon, and with already two fire resistances, um, on the team, which, I mean, Domain of Tans, again, not really in resistance, but, uh, you have that cover for you already, which is nice for him. Yeah, super, I mean, in terms of whatever way you want to spread the EVs on this Pokemon, you can in terms of defensive, especially defensive, obviously, yes, all those hazards, as you mentioned. Thunder Wave could slow down a threat like Greninja, um, in this division, um, and yeah, get some really annoying sets and it's really hard to break down, um, and knockoff is cool, too, if, if you know your opponent's gonna switch up. Absolutely. The final tier 2 Pokemon that Matt has called up is Thunderous Therian. Um, really strong Pokemon with 145 special attack stat and really good speed tier at 101, so you're always outspeeding those base 100s. Some more switch initiative. Uh, it does have a hard time dealing with ground types, like a lot of electric types, um, unless you want to run like Rain Dance Weather Ball, um, but it does get some really cool coverage with like Psychic and Sludge Wave. Um, so. Uh, I think I think all in all a pretty strong Pokemon, and he's able to break the 100 speed tier with this mod, which he needed. Yep, I think uh, overall maybe he's got two rocks weaknesses in his top four. So I mean, opponents might look to put up some rocks, but you can also of course run heavy duty boots on this this Pokemon. Yeah, and I think Ferrothorn is such a potent hazard setter that you're constantly forcing your opponent to defog. Which brings us to our next Pokemon, um, Bisharp in tier three. Uh, with the Defiance ability, of course. Um, and another Dark type for him, um, but I mean, Dark type is is a, is a pretty good offensive type, I think, in in this uh, group. Um, not that they, they, these these guys didn't know the other other uh, rosters beforehand, but I think having double Dark will be will be good for Matt. Um, very strong attacker with a knockoff um, and Iron Head and Sucker Punch, which people usually run with Swords Dance. Um, it also, I mean, it also can run rocks if you want to go that route. Um, so, really good Pokemon. And one that I, it hasn't been effectively utilized in our draft league, or really any draft league that I've seen. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I always feel like I've never... I mean, I feel like I even personally kind of sometimes struggle with this Pokemon when I'm trying to use it in higher tiers on the ladder, because it always ends up being kind of a, a higher tier Pokemon. But um, mm -hmm. for sure, I mean, like, if, if it's outspeeding something... I mean, that's just such a tough position to be in. Like, right. as, a, as a wall breaker, it gets knockoff in Swords Dance. Like, right. it can really scare out things. Right. I, and I think uh, the thing with, with Bisharp is is people, when they want a Steel type, they'll get a more defensive Steel type. Matt already has that uh, in Ferrothorn. Um, and he, he does have uh, two ground immunities. Um, and he has, uh, you know, two fire resistances. Um, and two. I mean, fairy. I guess fairy's not a weakness, but obviously, but it doesn't switch into fairy type moves very well. Um, so, I mean, fighting type is not looking great for for Matt, but he does address that later in his uh, roster selection. So, um, fish sharp, fun Pokemon. I hope it has uh, some success because I mean, I, I don't think people have really even drafted it yet. You know? So, um, excited to see that Pokemon do some work. Uh, Matt going above the 100 uh, speed tier again with Mian Xiao. Um, has, some, has some good abilities um, with Dre Regenerator and Reckless. I think it also gets inner focus, so it is immune to uh, Intimidate um, and, you know, Fake Outs if you want to go that route. Um, but, you know, it can, it can Swords Dance or it can run, you know, the standard Scarf or uh, uh, Banded sets. Um, it gets CC now, right? It gets CC, so people generally run Regenerator instead of like... But high jump, Reckless High Jump Kick is a really, really strong move. Um, but, you know, like Fake Out U-Turn, Close Combat, Coverage Move, it usually works out for this Pokemon. 
and some more U-turn, some more switch initiative for Matt. Yep, very solid Pokemon, and this Regenerator core that we're going to see in this next pick is actually something that Richie has employed in, in a couple different previous seasons, I think, um, with Reuniclus and Vienchao. Those two have some pretty good synergy, and, yeah, and Reuniclus, uh, you know, sometimes people can overlook it, but, you know, it can run uh, Magic Guard Life Orb set. It can be part of that Regenerator core, as I just mentioned. It's got Trick Room. I don't know if that would really, it wouldn't really work on this team, probably. Well, no, it could. With, with Bisharp, yeah. yeah well, I, I mean, you also have Ferrothorn and, and the next Pokemon. Yeah, so. no, yeah, for sure. So it's it's got some really cool options, and uh, it's got recovery too to to really uh, stay alive for the duration of the match. Yeah, uh, the the magic card is the set I fear more so personally than um, than regenerator, but uh, a really strong Pokemon can recover um, and can set up in your face if it wants to. Next up, Cofagrigus. He um, these both of these Pokemon uh, address his fighting type weakness so far. Um, Kafagrigus can also set up uh, Toxic Spikes, it's Will-O-Wisp, can mom uh, Memento for some really good um, uh, some really good momentum um, into a Sweeper. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he, he doesn't really have like a setup Sweeper in terms of speed, um, unless he wants to run Dragon Ant's Hydreigon, which, you know, could work. Um, so, but, but uh, it is a really good defensive Pokemon um, that can nullify the opponent's ability as well. Yeah, it can run a lot of cool things. Uh, gets pain to split too, which can be a really annoying move for the opponent. And yeah, definitely has the the defensive bulkiness in its stats to to really shine in a league like this. Absolutely. Going to his tier fives, he has his fairy type. Um, as you said, fairy types lacking in the first five gens, so he gets his prankster and his fairy type, um, and goes with Whimsicott, um, another super fast Pokemon. Prankster is always good. Um, and, you know, it, it gets, like, less energy ball and Leech Seed and stuff. Like, sub Leech Seed is really annoying um, with Whimsicott as well. Uh, and I believe Whimsicott gets Defog. Um, I think so, too. So, uh, I, outside of Head Dragon, he didn't have removal. Um, so, solid pick, I would say. Last up, Aloma Mola um, to uh, round out his Regenerator core. Um, annoying Pokemon to deal with. Uh, it definitely has lost its uh, potence in the in the last few generations, um, but Pokemon that uh, can wish pass, which which I think this team uh, appreciates. Um, so I mean, any thoughts on the Lomomola? Yeah, I mean, Gal used it to great effect, and I believe was that it was either season I think it was season four, or like the last abandoned season. Um, and that was really annoying, but like you said, I think it's been phased out in favor of some more bulkier water types who are a little bit less um, prone to being set up on. Um, but yeah, like I said, I think Wish passing into like a Darmanchan that's Flare Blitzed a couple times, if you can pull that off. Or, I mean, you can Wish Pass into something uh, that's using Regenerator, so you'll get back up to full HP and know you're probably going to live the hit on the turn you're switching in. So that could be kind of nice. Absolutely. We can look at the whole Univan national team here. Um, once again, that's Hydreigon, Dermanitan, uh, Ferrothorn, Thunderastherian, Bisharp, Mianxiao, Reuniclus, Kofagrigus, Whimsicott, and Aloma Mola. Thoughts on the overall team? Yeah, it's. Uh, I mean, it's. I, th I think it's a bit more balanced than I'm used to seeing from Matt. I feel like he's usually a bit more high on on speed and offense. And there were some some Pokemon like you know like Terrakion that he. He could have chosen to go for, but I, 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 I overall like the team. It seems like a fun team to use that has a, a good amount of options. Yeah, I mean, he needed a fairy type and a bulky water in tier five, unfortunately. Um, otherwise, I think Sticky Web would have been really great with this team. Um, and so, you know, he could have. Well, I guess Galvantula also exists. I was thinking Levanna, Levanna, but Galvantula is actually from this generation. So, um, if he were somehow to have gotten, you know, maybe Galvantula instead of Thunderous. Um, and doesn't start playing around. I think Sticky Web could have been really, really, really good for Hydreigon and, and Darmanitan. Um, but oh, his team is still super threatening. Um, and just hits, I think, really hard, has a lot of initiative, and it's just going to be a pain to deal with. And Matt himself has established himself as one of the top battlers in this league for three or four seasons now. For sure. Next up in Group 1 is the Kalos National Team, coached by Jared. For his first Team 1, uh, 
first first team or first first call up is what I meant to say. I don't know what I said. His first team one, first first call up, um, is Angel Size. So I'm now realizing I'm going to say first first tier one. First first ah, tier yes. one. Uh, he picks uh, Angel Slash. Um, got a little bit of a nerf in recent times, but still a super strong Pokemon. Uh, can run offensive, special, or physical. Can run toxic, King Shield. Um, really solid Steel type. Yeah, I think I think Jared definitely used this Pokemon either two seasons ago or a season ago. Um, I, I, I oh I think he got the first pick two years in a row, and was it was it last year he went for Dragapult because the season before he went for Aegislash? Yeah, I think that's something correct. like that. Something like that, yeah. Um, yeah, definitely super versatile Pokemon. Um, has has strong priority in that Storm form and can can take hits in its Shield form, of course. And uh, yeah, it's uh it, it's gotten access to. I feel like special sets have been more popularized in recent mm -hmm. times, so that that can be really threatening as well. Yeah, I mean, even like Toxic Shadow Ball um, is is I think a really good set for his second tier one. Uh, Jared goes with Greninja, which is permitted to use its Protein ability. Kalos, I think, needed some help, so um, this kind of provided that Zygarde was also legal. A little surprised he didn't go with Zygarde, but Aegislash and Protean Greninja are two really, really good Pokemon. Battle Bond is not allowed, because that is technically a Gen 7 Pokemon. Um, and it wouldn't be allowed anyway, probably. Yeah, but it will, yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, some Switch Initiative for the team can be any type. Is also a Spike Setter. Super fast, gets priority with a lot of Shuriken. Um, excited to see this Pokemon back in, in the draft format. Um, because In our draft format, at least, because we haven't used Cut Pokemon. Um, yeah. So, Greninja um, surprisingly is a cut Pokemon. For his first tier 2, he goes with Gudra, um, a super bulky on the special side dragon type. Um, and I, mean, I think works well with, with Aegislash. Um, those two work really well together. Um, I think, you know, Greninja also being able to U turn into either Aegislash or Gudra is going to put a lot of pressure on the opponent. Um, Gooey's an underrated ability. Obviously, it gets uh, Sap Zipper too, um, which, uh, you know, is helpful. Uh, so, yeah, sol solid Pokemon. Solid Tier 2. Um, and if you if you want a Dragon-type from Kalos, this is going to be the one you're going to get, most likely. Even though I think Jared, yeah, Jared took two, so... <laughs> yeah, there's also Noivern. Yes, there uh, is, yeah. Yeah, Gudra, Gudra's, you know, one of the better defensive, pure defense... I mean, you know, defensive-minded Dragon-types there are. Uh, in Pokemon, and um, I think this there, there are certain matchups where Gudra can literally be your win con because it can be so hard to be broken down. Absolutely. Um, and, I mean, and it does hit pretty hard too, and and can be run special or physical as well. A lot of coverage it gets. For a second tier two, um, Jared goes with Sylveon, the fairy type introduced in Gen Six, the fairy type evo evolution that is. Um, a lot of fairy types in this generation because. It was the introduction of, of the type, um, but Sylveon's probably the best one, uh, and you know it's a wish passer for the team. Wish into Gudra and Aegislash is going to be just awful. Um, it's a cleric with Heal Bell, obviously hits pretty hard with Hyper Voice and now Mystical Fire, uh, has a pretty high special attack stat, um, and can also Baton Pass. So um, Wish Baton Pass, really strong set. Yep, yep. We um, d don't allow uh, baton passing stats uh, like the regular Smogon does not. But um, yeah, now Sylveon, that mystical fire now can be super deflating, getting a special attack drop on something trying to switch in. Um, and, you know, yeah, that pixelate hyper voice is going to hit uh, hard. I mean, even with no special attack investment. Mm -hmm. And pixelate quick attack. Maybe we'll see that. <laughs> um, next up, Heliolisk, a Pokemon I really like. Um, going above. The 100 speed tier with 109, 108, um, one of those uh, speeds, um, and um, I think a pretty strong Pokemon. Uh, you know, Stab, Thunderbolt, Hyper Voice is really good. It gets a cool move called Parabolic Charge, so it can get some healing back. Doubt he'll run it. Um, it gives him a Water Immunity, um, which with the Dry Skin ability, which he doesn't necessarily need. But if he wants to run Sun for, you know, for any reason, he can and, and run Solar Power too with Weather Ball. Um, all around a really good Pokemon and some more initiative for him. I guess I believe it gets U-turn and Volt Switch. 
And then a dry skin also gets a benefit from being in the rain, right? You, you get passive health, or you get health every turn. Yeah, you heal. And, I mean, if you want to rain, you can run Weather Ball with the dry skin. And Gudra gets hydration as well. Yeah. Which... Oh. Also, yeah, so there's maybe potential there. But yeah, Helio Lisk, I, I feel like I generally always just put a choice vex on it and call it a day. But <laughs> because it's fast enough to outspeed most other things, and, you know, it, it's not really bulky enough to take a lot. So just being able to, you know, get a choice vex, bolt switch off, and get out of there is, is quite nice. But it gets it gets some it's like, it gets some cool moves, like you said, beyond that, like Surf, which would be even more yeah. powerful in the rain. So Yeah, and I think Surf and the Stab Hyper Voice really separate it from some of the other electric... Some of the other mint to low tier electric types um, in, in, across all regions. So, uh, good pick for me. His second tier two is Talonflame. No longer the monster it once was with the Gale Wings uh, nerf, but still a strong Pokemon and an MU staple right now. Um, although it is run defensively with like sometimes even with Flame Body um, yeah. and like Will O Wisp U Turn Roost. Um, but, you know. It can get one. It can get one really strong hit off with Brave Bird at any point now, especially with heavy duty boots, um, that you're just going to have to take. So even more uh, initiative for Jared. Uh, you know, I think five, the four out of the six Pokemon he has has some switch initiative. So I think a super strong, super strong start for him. Um, and uh, obviously, it gives him his first ground immunity, which he needs with Heliolisk and AU Slash. Yeah, this this Pokemon is like you said. I've been seeing a lot of Flame Body uh, defensive sets in NU, but I mean, in, in a draft league like this, it might even shine at being you know just like an offensive bander. I mean, Brave Bird's not you know priority, but as based anymore at uh, if it's not at full health, but it still has 126 base speed. So I mean, I, I'm assuming it could have some kind of offensive role against certain matchups as well, and it's got a good typing as well. I mean, you kind of have to run heavy. Oh, I guess that's the only thing. I mean, you you would run around heavier duty boots, so running like a band set would prevent you from doing that but for sure i mean it's got a lot of a lot of utility absolutely going into tier four the second starter for this national team chestnut um which is a really solid low tier defensive type uh defensive pokemon um gets access to you know spiky shield and i believe spikes um so i mean that'll be good to have another spike setter on his team um so yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't have much thoughts on, on Chestnut. I think it's uh, another ground resi ground resistance that he needed. Um, so, yeah, solid Pokemon, I think. Yeah, this is the first time I ever looked at Chestnut's face, actually. I feel like, you know, it's just small relative to the rest of his body, so I never actually just look at it. It's, uh, what do you think about the design? Ah, uh, well, we're not going to get into that right now, but I, I think Chestnut kind of fell short of what it could have been, um, along with with uh, Del Fox, but... Yeah, the first two evolutions are pretty cool, I think. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Um, his second tier four is the second dragon type that I alluded to. I, um, what, what is this Pokemon called? Tyrantrum. Um, and I actually think this is a really underrated Pokemon. You can run Dragon Dance, but anything with Head Smash, especially one with a Pokemon with an attack stat this high, it doesn't really have... Like, Banded Head Smash doesn't really have a resistance. Right. Um, it does... Uh, half at least to like a defensive dust skull or a dust clops, excuse me. Um, right. And with its ability rock head, it does not take recoil damage from the head smash, making it just an insanely powerful move that has no almost no drawbacks besides the accuracy. Right. Well, that's a pretty big drawback. Yeah. <laughs> Only 80 accuracy. But cool Pokemon that again we don't really see so uh, in our draft league. So excited to see that. In tier 5, he takes the second fossil, Aurorus, um, which doesn't do much for his typings, but it does give him Aurora Veil, and I think um, Aurora Veil, this team behind Aurora Veil could be really scary uh, with Greninja and Aegislash. Um, also gives him another rocker. Uh, you could run, you know, Refrigerate, but I, I don't see why you wouldn't run um, uh, Aurora Veil. Uh, Snow Warning. Snow Warning, yeah. Uh, Snow Warning, Aurora Veil, Aurorus. Uh, it can also T-Wave and stuff, too. So, um, I think a really solid Tier 5, honestly. Just w When you're in Tier 5, you want to draft Pokemon that provide, some, that provide something that the opponent has to prep for. And Aurora Veil is one of those things, in my opinion. It'll be interesting to see how he handles hazards, because, I mean, you know, uh, Tyrantrum, Andrew Ninja, they both, you know, they get access to self Strike and Spikes, respectively, but not, like, the ideal setters for those. And Aurora's is not a Pokemon necessarily, 
he's going to be bringing in week in and week out, mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how he handles that week to week. But yeah, Lorus has got potential. Absolutely. And the final Pokemon called up to Kalos is the Vivian. Um, never seen this Pokemon used. Don't know what it does. Is this cut? Uh, probably Quiver Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's cut. Um, I think he can Quiver Dance, so we'll see if Jared brings it, but I hope he does, because I want to see this Pokemon do some work. Me too. And there is the full Kalos national team coming to the World Cup. You have Aegislash, Greninja, Gudra, Sylveon, Heliolus, Talonflame, Chestnut, Tyrantrum, Aurorus, and Vivian. The final team in Group 1 is Alola, coached by Samir. Um, Samir, new to the draft format, and new to battling as a whole, really. So, um, we'll see how he does this season. With his first Tier 1, he goes with the Tapu Fini, one of the strongest Pokemon in all of Draft League. Um, can be defensive, can be offensive. The setup Iron Defense, Calm Mindset is, is incredibly hard to deal with, especially since you can't Toxic it for 5 turns. Um, it gets Draining Kiss and, and, and Defog as well, so um, really, really strong Pokemon. Yeah, one of your favorites to use, and I've, I've seen enough replays to know that it can it can put in a sweep or two. Yeah, or three, even. Um, but uh, yeah, Tapu Fini, like Iron Defense, can really it can beat Grass types, which physical Grass types, which you know that that's one of the main counters to this Pokemon. Um, Zera Aura is his other tier one, um, and really good synergy with Fini. Obviously, with the Misty Train, it can't be Will O Wisp which is super nice. It gives him some switch initiative with the Volt Switch. Um, but, you know, I think the fact that it has Volt Absorb is really nice for Tapu Fini as well. So, uh, solid pick. Yeah, I mean, this, this Pokemon is just, what, what is it, 143 base speed? Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it's it's basically going to outspeed, you know, basically everything else in this division. I mean, yes, it is the fastest Pokemon in this division. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be super important. It's going to allow him to, you know, uh, run Life Orb or Heavy Duty Boots. Um, it gets set up in bulk up so it can win games at the end. And it's got, you know, knockoff, close combat, all super nice moves to have. And, um, you know, we'll see if we'll see if the Plasma Fist... Uh... Wait, so, so I... Uh, okay. I was, gonna, I was gonna say, I wonder how Plasma Fist interacts with with Pixelate, but but Pixelate probably is a fairy like it, it makes yeah. those fairy type moves, right? Yeah. So he, he could, Hyper Boys wouldn't like heal. Zero. I don't think so. <laughs> After Plasma Fist. Yeah, not from Sylveon. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, I mean, it also gets some cool coverage um, with like Knock Up, Close Combat, Play Rough. Uh, you can run Bulk Up as well. Uh, just a strong Pokemon. One of the one of the highest floors, I think, of any Pokemon in the format. For his first tier 2, the IPVL Legend, Necrozma, um, called up to Alola. Uh, another Pokemon that works really well with Tapu Fini, in my opinion. Fini, you know, resists the the Dark Time moves. Necrozma half resists them anyway. Um, you know, Atomize, like you know, weakness policy, super scary set to go up against. Photon Geyser is kind of a broken move, um, but I mean it's not broken, but it's just super strong. Uh, can also run defensive with like a Moonlight, Stealth Rock, Thunder Wave, that type of thing. Um, and can be special or physical. You know, you can run Autonomize Weakness Posse or just straight up Dragon Dance or Surf Dance. So, um, really versatile and a really strong Pokemon. Misty Surge will be really nice paired with this too. If, if it can get off those setup moves without being toxic. Absolutely. Next up is Tapu Gulu in Tier 2. Um, gives him the nice ground resistance for Zera Aura. It also cuts those Earthquakes in half for Zero Aura as well, forcing opponents to run high horsepower, which is always fun. Um, obviously, he has the double terrain, but I don't think that's a problem, honestly. Um, you know, I, I think terrain is... Yeah, for these two Pokemon, you know, it's not like he's trying to use Unburden or anything. Like, he can use the terrain how he sees fit, um, in my opinion. So, solid pick, Tapu Bulu. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see um, the passive healing part of it, you know, like that can end up benefiting the other team more than you, just depending on how you're running your teams, but I think mm -hmm. I think Samir's got enough, like, offensive pressure on his team to not make that too big of a deal. Yeah, and I think honestly, the passing, the passive healing will be good for him, because I mean, we'll, we'll see at, with the full team, he has no wish passer, so um, that could be that could be strong for him. 
Moving into tier 3, we have Incineroar, the starter, the fire starter from the region. Um, strong pick in tier 3. Gives him two types that he needs with this team, I think. Uh, really, any team needs. Um, great ability with uh, Intimidate. Uh, some more switch initiative, which he needs. Just a second Pokemon that gets either get, that gets U-turn or Parting Shot. Um, so, yeah, strong Pokemon in my opinion. Yeah, I, even like an uninvested Overheat does good damage. Um, it gets it gets flavorless as well. And I mean, if that's invested, that's going to do a lot. Um, and yeah, knockoff super important. Uh, yeah, like I just think this is just an awesome defensive Pokemon. Yeah. Um, you know, it, it does have a hard time taking multiple hits, especially if you're running heavy duty boots. Um, so I think this is a Pokemon that Grassy Terrain will benefit beyond just having Earthquakes. So, next up in Tier 3, the Jack of All Trades, Sylvalli. Um, this is Sylvalli any type. Um, so, you know, in, in a format like this, having a Pokemon that can be any type is super useful. Base 95s across the board, um, which I think he needed to approach that 95 speed tier. Um, because uh, he had Zeraora at 143, and then, you know, his next fastest Pokemon is Topophenia at 85. Um, so, the 95 uh, is important. Uh, it can also run Parting Shots, um, so more Switch Initiative. And Multi-Tech hits really hard now. Yeah, for sure. You can run Flame char Charge 2 to boost your speed, mm -hmm. and it's got Defog as well. Um, and yeah, he, he, he likes a steel type on this team, so that could be a, a way he goes some weeks. Yeah, I, I feel like that's what it's going to be, honestly, most of the time, but we'll see based on the matchups. Um, next up in tier four is Mudsdale, uh, gives him another electric immunity, a ground type that can, that can utilize the high horsepower, um, which is important. Great ability with stamina, um, his first or his second stealth rocker on the team. Rest, rest talk, Mudsdale is a really annoying set to go up against. Um, obviously can't rest in his own th misty terrain, but uh, just a, just an annoying set. And well, like Iron Defense and Body Press type thing? Yeah, that works too, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, you don't even need to run Iron Defense with, with stamina. That's true. Um, That's true. But it gets, yeah, it gets Body Press, it gets Earthquake slash High Horse Power, Heavy Slam, so um, solid Pokemon. Yep, gets Toxic too, that can be really nice on it, and uh, yeah, good defensive type. Pokemon. Yeah. Um, next up in tier four, Vikavolt. So sticky webs, as I mentioned, speed not really great on this team. Um, so the sticky webs could be really important for Pokemon like Feeny, Bulu, and Necrozma. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, just a good Pokemon with with the Roost hits super hard, has the incredibly high special attack stat. Um, you know, Bug Buzz throw spray is fun. <laughs> um, so. I knew you were gonna mention that. It's a great set. <laughs> um, and, uh, Levitate's nice, too. Yeah, Levitate, I think, is nice for his team as well. It shares no weaknesses with Zera Aura. And our first tier 5 Pokemon, Lorantis, gives him another Defogger. Um, and can also... It gets Contrary in tier 5, so it's not terrible. Um, you know, it gets Contrary, Superpower, and Leaf Storm. And has decent stats across the board, actually. So, uh, it'd be cool if this Pokemon... Uh, was able to shine a little bit um you know contrary leaf storm in the grassy terrain could actually put in a lot of work <laughs> um so I, I i i i'm interested to see how he utilizes pokemon and if he does yeah <laughs> and then finally we have minior uh minior of course with the shields down ability as we can see um when it gets below half hp boosts his attack that's both its attacking stats to 100 and its speed to 120 but is super defensive prior to that. Um, can run Stealth Rock, but I think if it, when it comes, it's going to be running Shell Smash mostly. Um, so Pokemon that's difficult to deal with um, and something that you have to prep for with this Shell Smashing ability. A lot of setup on this team. And here we can see his full team, which is Tapu Fini, Zeraora, Necrozma, Tapu Bulu, Incineroar, Silvalli, Mudsdale, Vikavolt, uh, Lorantis, and the... Minior. So, really strong Pokemon. Alola was always going to be a super strong team. Um, and uh, Samir with some with some interesting picks, which, which you know, I think are interesting, not in a bad way. I, mean, I just think it's, like, cool. Yeah, yeah, um, for sure. So, yeah. No Kamoa, which I'm kind of surprised about. But... Yeah, Kamoa is very good, very versatile. Yeah. But, yeah, it's uh, cool. You know, it's been a... It's been a bit of a long time coming for... We, we've been talking about getting Samir in, involved in the league for a while now, but... Yeah. Uh, 
I, uh, we, we started this league when I was 15, and it's cool to see him uh, at a similar age now uh, starting up in the league. Absolutely. Um, and, yeah, I, I, you know, this Pokemon, this team doesn't have a Dragon type, which with Misty Train is not the worst thing in the world. Um, I mean, I guess Silvalli has a Dragon type, so... <laughs> Uh, maybe he'll bring some Ally Dragon as well. That rounds out uh, Group 1. Here we have Group 2 now. Um, we have Kanto, Johto, Sinnoh, and Galar. First up is Kanto, coached by you, Sahil. Um, uh, look at that flag. I love that flag. Um, <laughs> That's pretty cool. It's based on the Welsh flag. It has the red, blue, and green. Did you make um, it? I, I didn't make it, no. Yeah. I, I, it was initially white and green. I just I had to add the blue. Um, but, um, yeah, so, first up for your tier one is Clefable. You know, you mentioned first five gens, it's hard to find fairy types, almost a necessity to draft Clefable in tier one. Yeah, that's what I was, I mean, there's also basically no steel types, because that was introduced in gen two, and dark was also introduced in gen two. Uh, there's, the, I think the only steel type is, is Magneton, so, I mean, not great. Yeah, for, uh, you know, I, if I didn't draft Clefable, I would be susceptible to just things outraging me, probably, and, um... Fable definitely important in that regard. Super versatile, can do a lot of stuff. Never used it in the draft league, or I don't even know if I was on the ladder. But so um, I'm excited to. to I, I think I'm going to need to be a little bit creative. It doesn't have the highest base stats, but I. But if you can, if you can figure it out, you can. Don't, don't under don't underestimate its base stats. It is a strong Pokemon. Uh, it gets two really nice abilities with Stealth Rock and Unaware that you can run. You just said Stealth Rock. Just, unaware. <laughs> sorry, uh, Magic Garden <laughs> Unaware. Um, which, you know, you can run depending on your opponent. It can wish pass, um, and it gets a slow teleport off. It can also uh, set up South Rock, which is what I was trying to say earlier, um, and can T-Wave, too. I think an incredibly strong Pokemon. Really great. One of the best support Pokemon in the game, in my opinion. So, um, I know you don't you don't sound too enthusiastic about Clefable. I think it's going to be crucial to your team. Then we have Mew, uh, one of the strongest Pokemon in the uh, in the format. Um, the, probably the most versatile Pokemon out there in terms of it being um, offensive or defensive, special or physical. Uh, it gets Stealth Rock and Spikes, which is really nice. Um, you have two Cosmic Power users, <laughs> which, <laughs> why? <laughs> um, so, already, but um, yeah, I mean, this thing with Mew, or this thing with Clefable is annoying. Uh, Clefable also gets aromatherapy too, so, um, any, any thoughts on, on Mew? How many times have you used Mew? Uh, I think this is my sixth time, including one season in a different league. Yeah. Um, pretty familiar with it, have had varying levels of success, but at its peak it's been, it's been key to, to for me, and, um, uh, two seasons ago I had it most recently in the IPBL, um, and it took me to the semifinals, took me pretty far, but, um, yeah, super versatile Pokemon, and, uh, I'll probably be running Metronome every week. <laughs> yeah, I would love that. Um, uh, please run that against me. Um, yeah, I, I mean, it's just, it's one of the best Pokemon. It's also kind of an inevitable pick. You know, Clefable Mew kind of had to be your first, you know, your tier ones. Um, our first tier two, though, Dragonite, uh, another incredibly strong Pokemon, um, can be special or physical again. Um, gives you Defog if you want to run a more defensive set. Uh, great ability with multi scale. And then obviously Dragon Dance. You know, I, I I use this in a BDSP league, which is a little bit different. Um, but it is, I mean, it is a really strong Pokemon. Like Dragon Dance with like Earthquake and Extreme Speed is just really, really strong. And now it gets really good at flying. Uh, well, not really good, but it gets a decent flying type um, stab with Dual Wing Beat now. Um, so great Pokemon in my opinion. Then we add Nidoking, um, which, again, a super strong Pokemon with sheer force gives you Stealth Rock and Toxic Spikes, so you have two rocker, or three Rockers and two Toxic Spikers. Um, and then, you know, offensively with the Life Orb, not taking damage from sheer, uh, not taking damage from Life Orb um, with its sheer force ability, and, you know, boosting all of its attacks, basically. Um, just a, it's a strong Pokemon overall. It gives you a Poison type that allows you to deal with Fairy types, especially since you don't have um, a seal type on your team, because they don't really exist in Gen 1, so, solid Pokemon. Um, another Ice type weaknesses, a uh, weakness, but you're dealing with that in your first tier 3 Pokemon, which is Arcanine. Um, 
Arcanine, another Pokemon with Teleport. Um, also with Intimidate, which can be helpful. You know, Intimidating something and teleporting into Mew or into Clefable and being able to wish up your team uh, is great. Um, you know, Offensive, Offensive, Offensive Arcanine is pretty good too, though. So, um, you can run it either way. Yeah, I feel like I used to see it more. I don't. I probably. I mean, I, I, this might totally be off, but I used to see it run more offensively, and now I see it more run defensively. But I mean, that might be a part of it. Getting access to heavy duty boots and uh, teleport. Um, yeah, I, I've loved using this Pokemon in ladder recently. Um, I find you know it, it can. It's not set up fodder because of teleport and toxic, and can hit pretty hard. It gets access to priority too. So um, yeah. One of, the, one of the cooler defensive types. I, I've been really... Le I, I'm starting to like defensive fire types. Defensive fire types are good. Yeah. I guess will as well. Um, his second... Your second tier three is Ditto. Um, Ditto, a Pokemon that's so annoying to prep for. So you have the Unaware, and you have a Pokemon that will copy all of your stat boosts. So um, really hard to set up against your team already. You don't have a Steel type on your team, but Ditto can be. Um, so... Just a really strong Pokemon, you know. People tend to run Choice Scarf, but I, you know that's not the only thing you can do with it. Um, I think this Pokemon is probably going to come more than you think. So actually, I don't know how much you think. It's come, <laughs> we'll but, see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, first tier four is Blastoise. So I'll really get in his NU Pokemon. Um, you know, it's your second. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's, I guess it's your third Pokemon for removal technically. Um, but your first rapid spinner, and you have so many hazards that I think having rapid spin, uh, just to be able to get rid of hazards on your side, is really good. Um, also, Blastoise can shell smash, which is scary. Um, so, solid tier 4, you needed the bulky water type. Yep, I'm excited to use this one. Then we have Jolteon, one of the original Eeveelutions. Um, just, you know, you needed something above base 100 speed. Uh, you know, Mew was your fastest Pokemon. Um, so hitting that 130 speed tier, along with Pokemon that hits pretty pretty hard, um, more switch initiative with Bolt Switch or Baton Pass if you're afraid of brown types. Um, yeah, just just solid, solid tier 4 Pokemon. Yep, definitely gives me some speed. Yep, and the Bolt Absorb. Up in tier 5, we have Primeape, a Pokemon we barely see, but one I'm super excited to see. Pretty underrated Pokemon. I know you're really excited about Primeape. Um, can't be put to sleep, which is nice, and it hits pretty hard. It does. Are you going to run Angel Point? <laughs> we'll see. Okay, well, your analysis for this is <laughs> not very fun. Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm <laughs> um, getting and... my cards close to my vest. Yeah, okay. There's a chest or vest? There's either. I, I don't know. Probably vest. I think it's vest. That seems like a poker thing or something. Ah, okay. <laughs> well, um, <laughs> your last Pokemon is Tangela. Uh, with Eevee Light, really bulky, um, gives you some regenerator, I think, solid for a tier 5 Pokemon. Your full team, Sahel, can be seen right here with Clefable, Mew, Dragonite, Nidoking, Arcanine, Ditto, Blastoise, Jolteon, Primeape, and Tangela. All in all, a pretty strong team. Gen 1 is limited in some ways, so I think, I think this is probably the best team that you could have built, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to using it. Got to Got the first, one of the first ever evolutions, got the first mythical, got the first pseudo, so, first yeah. starter. Yeah, you're yeah. gen one. Uh, you well, have a lot of firsts. Nah, I'm, yeah, I'm saying though, though. It's like, not even the first starter, it's the second starter. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Just to get to your team. <laughs> Alright, next up is Johto, coached by me. Johto super weak, so we allowed uh, the coach of Johto, which ended up being me, even though it was my eighth choice. Uh, <laughs> Such a good guy. Yeah, yeah. Um... We allowed Johto to get one of the two legendary birds uh, if they wanted to, along with another tier one. So um, I ended up going with Lugia, which I think, you know, it's just, it's better. Especially, you know, with my team, I'm, I'm running rain, so I didn't really need a fire type. Um, but super bulky with, uh, with multi scale and then like 154 base defenses. Um, and it's, it's pretty fast too, so. Um, can, um, you know, gets Hydro Pump and, like, Leather Ball in the rain. And it probably gets, like, a good HP stat, too, right? Yeah, it does. It's not one of those Pokemon that has, like, yeah, no. insane defenses and then, like, 50 HP, like, wrote off. No, no, no. Yeah, I mean, it is, it is, it's bulky in Ubers. Yeah, 106 HP, 130 defense, 154 special defense, and 110 speed. 
Yes. Um, and and it's, it's annoying because like you can you can run defensive sets and still outspeed a lot of things, and yeah. you can you can like roost and not be weak to like rock, ice, and uh, electric anymore. I'm exactly. sure that's something with that'll happen. Yeah, with the with the multi scale too. Um, you know, sub toxics nice. As I was saying, weather ball in the rain could be really good. Um, gets calm mind too. It gets ninety in attack and special attack. Um, pressure also not a bad ability either, but uh, I think multi scale is going to come more often than not. Um, but I'm really, I'm really excited to use this Pokemon. Uh, never use Lugia, obviously it's never allowed. Um, so excited to use one of the box art legendaries from this generation, and one of the, the first generation to use box art legendaries. So a tradition started in the Johto region. Probably the first box art legendary that's ever been allowed in the IPB held as well. Uh, is that is that true? I'll think on that. Um, next up, I mean Suicune. Um, uh, next up we have Scizor. Uh, Scizor is my second, uh, in quotes, tier one. Really my first tier one. Um, there are only two tier ones in this, in this gen, uh, outside of Lugia and Ho-Oh, so, uh, Scizor, really strong, um, you know, the introduction of the Steel type is in this generation, um, so, why not, you know, rep it with Scizor. Um, obviously gets Bullet Punch U-Turn, Roost can be offensive or defensive. Um, so, I mean, by def it can't really be defensive, but it can be bulkier is what I mean. Um, gets debug, uh, so, yeah, I, I really like this Pokemon. Yeah, it's an excellent Pokemon, and, and it, I love that it's Mega, like, kept Technician, because it just, just became so powerful, but, I mean, Scizor by itself is, is awesome in its own right. Yeah, te kept, yeah. yeah Technician is, uh, is a great ability with Skull Punch, so, um, and the priority is nice as well. Next up, we have Raikou. Um, really fast Pokemon, uh, 115 base speed, hits hard, can calm mine. Um, some, I think all three Pokemon get initiative. Um, Scizor and Raikou at least do. Uh, and um, you get know, Scald now. Yeah, Scald and in the, in the, I, like I said, I'm running Rain. Um, so like having the Scizor and the Raikou that can run Thunder or Scald in the Rain is super nice. Uh, and can deal with with the ground types in that way as well. And then the Rain Sweeper itself, Kingdra, um, another evolution from Gen 1. I'm just stealing all your Pokemon, <laughs> making them better. <laughs> um, you, have, uh, you have another one down the line, too. I do, hi. Um, oh, yeah, I guess I do. Uh, yeah, Kingdra, um, you know, obviously in the rain, you can run Choice Specs or Life Orb, get Surf, you know, Draco Meteor, or Hurricane, Flip Turn, you know, Ice Feet if you want to run it for some reason. Um, just really strong. Puts a lot of pressure on the opponent. Yeah, and th this rain choice here is just really just uncreative. It's not, it's I mean, Johto. I mean, this... it's, <laughs> you you kind of have to. Like, there's not much choice. I mean, do better. Do better. I mean, it's... Okay. <laughs> uh, well, Polytoad is... If you win with rain, I mean, it's not even winning, really. Well, I disagree. Mm -hmm. um, I, mean, I, have one way, I have one real rain sweeper. So, um, you know, it's, it's not like I'll... I might not always bring rain, but... What is Polytoad's other ability? Is, is it anything... I, I don't think so. Okay. Um, might be like Hydration or something like that. Yeah, probably. Um, but, you know, Polytoad, I think the worst of the two rain setters, um, although it is not four times a week to electric like Pelipper, but it does not get that switch initiative, so um, that's annoying. But, you know, people run Rest or like, you know, Whirlpool Parish Song. <laughs> um, so, yeah, maybe maybe that's something that, that I'll do with Polytoad. Not much to say besides it being a rain, rain setter. Um, I then went with Umbreon. Um, dark type, uh, really nice with the Lugia. Can also wish pass into Lugia. Uh, you know, if you wish pass into Lugia, you can kind of take any hit with the marble, with the multi scale, uh, regardless of, of the type of move. Um, also gets access to Heal Bell, Baton Pass, some more initiative. I, I, in one of the draft leagues I'm competing in currently, I have Umbreon. Love Wish Baton Pass. Um, and then Foul Play as well. Bit of setup fodder, but with Baton Pass allowed, I think it, it, can, it can do okay. So it doesn't get Taunt, right? I don't think so. It might. I mean, it'd be a slow Taunt, even if it did, but yeah. uh, I don't think it gets that. But yeah, it, yeah, it's... Uh, Synchronize is nice, too. It's weird they didn't give this one Moonlight. Uh, they did. Oh, it doesn't Moonlight. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. For some reason, I feel like I always see which protect would make sense since it's so bulky, and it would yeah. give like leftovers too. It may not need heals for itself, but yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm like just now looking at it, appreciating how great of a design this is. By the way, um, 
yeah, uh, wish it. Wish with this team with like Scizor, Raikou, and Lugia. I think it's going to be really strong. Next up, are uh, in tier four, I went with Miltank. Um, nice thick fat Pokemon can set up rocks. Um, base 100 speed, which is something that I wanted. Um, it also gets Sap Zipper, so for you know Rillaboom. the rain. Yeah, I mean I guess yeah for, for Rillaboom. Um, yeah, just solid Pokemon I think. Can Thunder Wave gets a lot of coverage. Another thick fat Pokemon in Pilosmine. Um, I felt like I needed I needed a ground type. This was kind of the best one I could take. Um, with Eevee Light, it's pretty bulky. It hits pretty hard too. Um, you know, with Earthquake, gets access to priority, another Stealth Rocker. Um, so, I think just a solid Pokemon um, in, in Tier 4. I've been saying that about a lot of Pokemon, but a lot of these Pokemon are solid, so. I think Dion in Season 6, or, yeah, Season 6 used a Palosine to, to great effect about him to the, to the top final. Yeah, and, I, you know, I needed I needed at least two Stealth Rockers, I think, so Miltank and Palosine really helped me with that. Um, Ariados, uh, tier 5 Pokemon with Sticky Webs and Toxic Spikes, and a really cool move called Toxic Thread, which poisons your opponent and lowers their speed. Um, 100 accuracy? Yeah. Wow. Uh, and, I mean, it does have the 100 accurate Toxic anyway, but, um, right. uh, it also gets Sucker Punch and Shadow Sneak and like, Leash Life. Um, not strong at all, but, you know, can, can run lead webs if need be. Toxic Spikes also. Toxic Spike in the rain is really annoying. And then finally, uh, it's first five generation, not many fairy types. Um, so, Gramble in tier five was kind of my only choice. It can also run Heal Bell, um, gets Intimidate, hits really hard and gets a lot of coverage, but not that bulky. Um, we'll see how often I bring it. And the full team you can see here is Lugia, Scizor, Raikou, Kingdra, Politoed, Umbreon, Miltank, Piloswine, Ariados, and Gramble. Honestly, I think this is probably close, if not the best I could do with this generation. Mm -hmm. um, and like, rain gives it, a, rain gives it a chance. Um, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of these Pokemon do really well in their role. There's not like, I don't think a ton of versatility, maybe compared to some other teams, but that just might be what you had to, had to go with. Yeah, I mean, what else could I have drafted? Zumo? I mean, there's not a whole lot to do. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, there's just not that many Pokemon in Johto either. Yeah, there's only like 90 right? Yeah. I guess Kalos had fewer Pokemon, but also just better Pokemon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, nothing is as good as Lugia. Lugia is... Well, maybe it's not the best Pokemon in, in, in the World Cup, but it's definitely one of them. I mean, it's an Ubers for a reason. All right, next up we have Sinnoh, coached by Pranov, another newcomer, like we said. Um, going with the Sinnoh pseudo itself, Garchomp in Tier 1. Great draft league Pokemon. Great Pokemon all around. Don't really have to say much more than that. Can, can Stealth Rock, but, you know, also Sword Dance with Scale Shot now. Super strong. We then have Heatran, another incredibly strong Pokemon in Tier 1. Another Stealth Rocker. Um, yeah, I mean, Magma Swarm Taunt, really annoying. Um, especially as, you know, when we get to uh, the Galarian team, you know, that Magma Swarm Taunt might be crucial for him um, with, with the Slope not to get too ahead of ourselves, but, uh, yeah, you know, gets also access to Earth Power. If you run Scarf, like, Scarf Overheat's really scary. Um, I've seen a lot more Flame Body recently than Flash Fire, actually. Um, but either, either ability's good. Like, you have to, you're not gonna hit a Fire Titan move unless you know for sure it's not Flash Fire. So. Right, right. You don't want to give it that advantage, and also Air Balloon isn't one, is a good one to run if you're scared of any ground-type moves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the four times resistance to Ice for Garchomp. Nice as well. And uh, a fairy resist as well. Yeah, another fire type, but another ice resistance. Um, and now the ground resistance for Heatran, Rotom Heat. I think a really strong Pokemon. Obviously, Overheat, Thunderbolt, you know, it can nasty plot. Gives him Defog and some Switch Initiative, which he needed. We then have Togekiss, who can be clerical or, you know, nasty plot offensive, or Thunder Wave Air Slash, which is really annoying. Um, but great fairy type for him. Um, another ice type weakness, but he has two resistance, two resistances now, and he has two fairy type resistances. He has two, uh, an electric weakness and an electric immunity. So I think it, it fits really, it fits really nicely into his team. Right, he's got a poison immunity, some ice resistances as well. Yeah, yeah. he's uh, and I, I think like the Thunder Wave Air Slash Serene Grace set may be good for someone who's not done as much battling recently. It's pretty, you know, 
straightforward, pretty easy to use in some aspects. Yeah. Next up, Cresselia. Um, great, great, great defensive Pokemon. Um, yeah, I mean, Calm Mind is annoying, but people people just run, you know, usually just like a bulky pivot, kind of. Um, and I think that's probably the best way to use it, especially with this team. Gives him another ground immunity. Um, and uh, this team is really annoying, <laughs> now that I'm thinking about it. Uh, but I think it works well with this team. Yeah, Healing Wish could be a, a, a good one to, to revive Garchomp or Heatran for a, a late game sweeper. I think you mean Lunar Dance, but it's okay. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, yeah. I meant either, I guess. Wait, Lunar Dance literally revives a Pokemon? No, 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 no. It doesn't literally revive a Pokemon. Does I... it not get Healing Wish, or does Lunar Dance do the same thing as Healing Wish? Um, I think it's the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I think, I think the priority of the move might be a little bit different in terms of like when someone stitches in. Oh, Next, but I'm not 100% sure. Um, adding more to my annoyance is Tangrel, um, with the, which is a great regenerative Pokemon. Uh, another ground resistance, which is very, very nice. A water resistance, which he needed on the team. Um, and just another bulky pivot Pokemon that can eat up hits and switch out. Yep. Then we have Ampipom. He uh, Garchomp was his fastest Pokemon, so hitting 115 I think is really nice for his speed. Super underrated Pokemon in my opinion, one of my favorite mods to use. Technician Stab Fake Out is really nice. Technician Covet is also super nice. Um, you know, you can also run, I don't know, Skill Link, <laughs> Tail Slap if you wanted. But it gets great coverage with Knock Off, all the punches, you know, get Power Punch as well. Um, so I think a strong. Pokemon in tier four for sure. A fast U-turner will be good for him as well. Mm -hmm, absolutely, he he definitely needed that. Then we have Gastrodon, which works really well with this team because it does give him a water, uh, not only immunity but water type, water type moves boosts his uh, special attack. So two type immunities with abilities, which um, already which is nice, works well with Heatran. Um, obviously, you know, not an ice resistance for a water type, which is okay because he does have Heatran and Rotom, in my opinion. Uh, but he does have three ice type weaknesses, so, um, but I mean, you kind of just have to pick your poison, honestly. Like, just, I think the Storm Drain is too good to pass up. We have Floatzel, then. Um, you know, it, it, fast, pretty strong. Not the greatest Pokemon, but in Tier 5, I think pretty strong for its value. Um... Get Swift Swim, which is annoying for me. Um, and, uh, yeah, I don't, I, ha I don't have much to say about this one. Yeah, it gets uh, Aqua Jet. It's got a pretty, I think it's a, like 105 base attack, um, uh, at least. And uh, yeah, I think it's it ha it's got some good good hidden moves in there as well. Absolutely. And then rounding out the team is Skuntank. Skuntank, I think a really solid defensive Pokemon. Gives him Defog, which is nice. More priority with Sucker Punch. And gives him two types that he needed, I think, in Poison and Dark. Um, so, yeah. I mean, I guess Dark type was not super necessary with his team. But in Tier 5, it's such a great typing, it's hard to pass up. For sure. Not as good as Drapion, but, I mean, it's nice that he got another Poison Dark type since he... Right. Uh, yeah, I think there's it. only three of those, and two of them are in Gen 4. So, um, so the full Sinoan team is Garchomp, Heatran, Rotom Heat, Togekiss... Cresselia, Tangrowth, Ambipalm, Gastrodon, Fultzel, and Skuntank. And the last team in the group, and the last team we're going to be covering, um, is the Galarian national team, coached by Griff, another newcomer, um, but has some battling ex experience. So, um, this team, I think on balance, as we'll see, is probably one of the strongest teams, um, if not the strongest team. First up is Dragapult, uh, always the first pick in draft leagues it's allowed in, um, which is most draft leagues, it's not really banned um, much. Um, incredibly versatile attacker, um, can be special or physical, you know, with banned or specs. I, I mean, people don't really want banned, but you can run specs or set up with Dragon Dance. Uh, super fast U-Turner, if you want to run screens, you could, but um, don't see why you would do that. But uh, just really glad that you didn't give this Pokemon Poltergeist. Yeah, that would be pretty annoying. But I, I, in in draft league, at least in our draft league, I've seen a lot more of the special variant. It can be, it can just break through teams really easily, especially with infiltrator getting through screens and mm -hmm. stuff. So, um, yeah, just gets a lot of cool stuff. Um, and its its speed is base one forty two speed. It's hard hard to beat as well. Yeah, Isle of Armor getting some representation on the region's national team with the Urshifu Rapid Strike. Um, 
strong Pokemon, 97 speed tier, um, super strong meaning like physically, just has a great physical attack stat. Surging Strike, obviously always crits, so you know, it's gonna go through your Cosmic Power, Mews, or uh, Clefables. Um, <laughs> but obviously those Pokemon can just hit it back. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think sometimes it is pigeonhole into using protective pads, um, especially in Draft League, because you know it could be coming. Uh, the opponent knows it could be coming. But, I mean, Surging Strike's close combat is just super strong, so if you want to run Bandit or Scarf, incredibly hard to deal with. And another U-turn. And another U-turn! <laughs> um, Rillaboom, um, in Tier 2, uh, very strong priority with the grassy, the grassy Glide and the Grassy Terrain. Um, can set up with Swords Dance. Banded Wood Hammer and U Turn Knock Up Grassy Glide is also just a fantastic set. So, um, good Pokemon. Yep. Galarian Slowking, one of the most annoying Pokemon to deal with. Um, this Pokemon is so annoying that I haven't even exactly learned how to like beat it yet. Earthquake. That's how you do it. <laughs> or Taunt. Uh, well, Taunt doesn't really work if you're on a It has game. more Spadaff, I think, than, than Defense. No, it has higher Spadaff. Oh, maybe like it. Yeah. Um, I think one well, I thought so. Well, I'll look it up real quick. But um, people tend to run AV, which is um, very annoying. Yeah, it has 110 per death. Um, okay. And 80 defense. Um, so, yeah. Regenerator Pokemon, um, I think helpful with his team. His first, like, real defensive Pokemon, um, which was needed. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, gives him the fairy type resistance for uh, Dragapult. Um, you know, knockoff still. I mean, not, Urshifu is Urshifu actually has high special de or physical defense, but um, knockoff currently um, is hard for him to deal with. But he kind of addresses that with his next pick in Obstagoon. Um, some more switch initiative with Parting Shot has three really good abilities um, in Reckless, Defiant, and Guts. Um, but, you know, why would you run Reckless when you can just run Guts Facade, um, which is only four base power less than Reckless Double Edge. Right. Um, uh, but, you know, Defiant, if you, you, if you want to get rid of the... or if you want to deter Defogs, um, or Sticky Webs, uh, pretty strong. Just, 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 like, a Pokemon that hits really hard. Hits really hard, not many switch-ins for it, and... Like you said, it's 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 good for resisting a knockoff, and also if you already popped your flame orb, it's not gonna be a big deal to lose your item. Yeah. Then we have Reggie Electric, the fastest Pokemon um, in the games. Yeah, the fastest Pokemon of all times. Can outspeed base 110 Scarfers if it wants to. Um, yeah, I mean it, it, it's hard walled by by ground types. Can't deal with them at all. But you know it gets. It hits really hard with its ability, Transistor, um, and also um, can Volt Switch. can run Rapid Spin as well. Hits Extreme Speed um, with base 100 attack, which is nice, and is a really great screen setter uh, if Griff wants to go that route. And Tier 4, we have Orbeetle. Um, sticky Web user. Can, it is really bulky and fast. Um, Solid Pokemon. One of the best Secret Web users. Doesn't really get used because people usually have higher, higher tier psychic types, I think. But um, it is, I think, probably one of the best Secret Web users uh, in all of Pokemon. Especially in Gen 8, yeah. We didn't have Sanaconda. Um, he needed rocks. Um, and it does give him the uh, electric immunity for Urshifu. So, um, yeah, I mean, it gets Chad Skin, so you can't, you know, reliably toxic it. Um, it gets a glare, which is an incredible move. Um, so I think just a really solid pick in tier four because it gives him stealth rock, it gives him an immunity, um, and yeah, it, it's an annoying Pokemon to deal with. In yeah, my experience. With Shed Skin, it can run a, a rest sleep talk set where you also just kind of. Um... Well, why would you run rest if you have. Well, okay, actually, no, you're right. I'm stupid. Or not sleep talk, sorry. I don't think you would run sleep That's talk. That's what I meant to say, yeah. yeah. because, sorry, just like rest, you know, yeah. coil, earthquake, Yeah, whatever. coil, yeah, yeah. 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 There was something that wasn't computing. And I, <laughs> yeah. I, I, said it, I said it wrong, so I apologize about that. Yeah, um, good rest set where you can reliably, uh, you know, cure your status using shed skin. Right, yeah. And, uh, yeah, definitely an annoying Pokemon. Yeah. I think you need to prep for have a, you know, a good water or grass type moving. Your, your it, doesn't, it doesn't get um, other recovery. 
so rest is, is actually really good on it. I don't, I don't know if it gets high horsepower um, with the grassy terrain, so I mean, that's that's really the only thing that that's its issue. I mean, how, how it doesn't have heat, so I guess that hasn't stopped Pokemon before. <laughs> um, Next up, we have uh, Colossal. Gives him a fire type. Um, obviously, two four times weaknesses, but also gets Stealth Rock, Spikes, Rapid Spin. That's really what you're drafting for. And then finally, Mr. Rhyme, another ra Rapid Spinner, and a Screen Clear. Um, so you don't even need the Infiltrator if you win this Pokemon. You can just clear, clear the screens. Um, pr pretty bulky. Freeze Dry is really nice. I think the only Freeze Dry user in on all eight teams. Um, so, you know, I. Which could be pretty good against Sinnoh. Yeah, it'll be really good against Sinnoh. It's good against Johto. Um, and it's, it's pretty decent against you, too. So, I mean, Freeze Dry, um, really good pick for him. Um, and just another, you know, it's a tier 5 that does something for you. And there you have it the Galarian National Team with Dragapult, Urshifu Rapid Strike, Willow Boom, Galarian Soaking, Obstagoon, Or Beetle, Sanaconda, Colossal, Regilecki, and Mr. Rhyme. Probably the strongest team. Um, not not super defensive though. I I'm, I'm, I was realizing um, as I was putting these slides together, like there's not a whole lot of switchings to things, um, For sure. which I think might be an issue. But I mean, Soul King and Santa Cana can kind of get the job done. Um, but I, I I feel like they might have to come every week. And there we have all eight teams that you can see on the screen split into their two groups. Before, this video is going a lot longer than I thought it was going to, um, but, you know, before we sign off, what are, what are your predictions? Who, I want to hear who's getting out of each group, who's going to win the World Cup, and who do you think is going to be the kill leader, at least after the group stage, let's say, because um, obviously a team's going to get two extra games. So, what do you, what do you think? Um, uh, wait, can you repeat the prompt again? <laughs> who do you think is going to get out of the groups? Who do you think is going to win the World Cup? Who's going to, what Pokemon's going to get the most kills? Okay, for, not for each team, just for, like, all. Yeah, okay. yeah. Or you could do it for each group if you wanted. Okay, um, I think the, the, the team, I think I'll say that I will get out of my group along with, mm, I'll say, I'll say me and Griffin get out. Because, I mean, I think, I respect you as a battler, but I, I you, there might be some flaws with your team. And yeah, it's Joe Toe. But... I, yeah, and it would be cool to see a newcomer come out of a group, um, and I guess the best chance for that to happen is in this group, because there's two of them. Um, and then in the other group, I would say, um, I will go for, you know what, I'm gonna predict Jared and Richie to come out. I know, uh, Matt, Matt, I think is one of the best battlers in the league, but I think there might be, you know, possibly... A clash of styles between what he's been doing the last few seasons and what the team he ran, and I just really liked it, like Hoenn and, and Kalos's teams. Um, but his team's really good too. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's mostly just for fun. <laughs> uh, and then in terms of the winner of the first or the first complete World Cup, um, I'll go with uh, I'll go with Jared. Wow. Okay. Yeah, cool. Jared. And cool. I'll say Greninja will be the leading KO leader in the league. Jared, the first champion of the IPBL, Sahil's pick to win the World Cup. I think out of Group One, I see. Well, I, to me, the two strongest teams are, are, are Matt's and Samir's. Um, I think Jared's Jared seems strong, but like his last three Pokemon, kind of, I don't know. They aren't as good as other teams' last three Pokemon. That is true. Um, and then I think Richie. Richie has a really strong team too, in my opinion. Um, I'm gonna go with Matt and Richie, um, just because you know, Samir is an unknown quality or er, quantity. An unknown, yeah, yeah, he's 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 just an unknown battler. We don't know how good he is, um, but I mean he's relatively new to battling in general. So uh, I'm gonna go with the veterans, Matt and Richie. Uh, on my side, I'm gonna go with me and Griff, <laughs> um, just because you know you gotta have confidence. No one picked me to get out of my division in the IPBL, and look what happened. Um, but, I mean, I, my team was actually good. <laughs> Still lost in the semifinal, though. That, I mean, I made yeah. it farther. Well, I choke in, I choke in the playoffs. <laughs> we all know that. Um, but I'm going to pick myself to win the World Cup. <laughs> so who's, who would be the leading KO leader, Kingdra? Well, I, I think KO leader, I'm, I'm thinking through the group stage. Um, oh, okay. I think, uh, I think it's actually going to be... 
Um, I think it's actually going to be Dragapult. Um, but Greninja is a good choice, too. Um, if we're not, you know, talking about me winning the World Cup, I think, I think, I think really, it's pretty open. I think you, Matt, Richie, and Griff have, and Jared, I think everyone has a good shot to win the World Cup. Um, but I think, um, besides me, I think, I think I would go with Matt, um, which is probably my genuine pick. Matt, I think he has a good team, great region, and is a good battler, so I think he probably, um, could, will end up winning the World Cup. That's, um... And ju just to clarify, the first place team in Group One will play the second place team in Group Two in the semifinal, and vice versa. Yep. Um, if you made it through this video and you're not in the league, you can join our Discord as a spectator. <laughs> Doubt there's any of those out there. Um, but uh, really excited. Match week one starts on Sunday, June nineteenth, um, and then will last a week. Um, and I don't know if we'll have any more videos on the World Cup. Maybe just the final or something. Um, but, yeah, should be fun. Um, any last words on the World Cup? Look at that beautiful virtual trophy. Yes, thank you to you for designing the slideshow and document. Um, I'm so happy that we've had three completed seasons in a row, and I hope we can spice up the summer a little bit with a nice tournament as people didn't, didn't feel like they had time for a full season, which is totally understandable. Mm -hmm. And uh, hopefully we can finish this up to close out our Gen 8 experience with two seasons and a World Cup. And then we will be on to the uh, region for Gen 9, Scarlet and Violet. And that'll be bringing on its own new Pokemon and new matchups. And uh, yeah, exciting, exciting times hopefully up at, uh, coming ahead for us. Absolutely. Well, we're going to get out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. And Sahil said, we'll see you next time on IPBL Weekly.